Here's the thing about me. Um, I love to browse the internet. I actually do it all the time and you're probably doing it right now. Um, usually when you're doing this, you'll be using an internet browser and on the surface, they mostly look the same. But when you get into the nuts and bolts of it, they actually function very differently. Some of them are designed specifically to enable the collection of your personal information, whereas others are designed specifically to protect you from this. I took a look at five different browsers so that you don't have to. They range from super creepy to super secure, and we're gonna go over them now so that you can make the choice that's right for you. Okay, so before we dive in, um, let's talk about what tracking actually is. When we talk about privacy and internet browsers, what we're talking about is how they track you. And there's two main ways that they do this. The first is known as fingerprinting. And the way this works is that a website will basically look at all of the available information about your browser settings, your device settings, and try and create a unique fingerprint about you and then store it. The second primary form of tracking is through cookies. Um, you have probably heard of cookies before, but you might not know exactly what they are. When you go to a website, the website will try to put a text file called a cookie onto your hard drive and it contains a small string of unique characters which you can then retrieve when you visit the site later in order to identify you. In many cases, this is done in a way that isn't invasive, but there are types of cookies that are extremely invasive and exist only to track you across the internet. So when we talk about tracking, it's basically gonna be either one of those two things. First up is Google Chrome, which uh, red flag straight out the gate, Google. Google is one of the biggest companies in the world and they make basically all of their money by collecting personal information about people and then selling it to advertisers. Chrome is essentially doing everything it can to track the information about how you're using the browser, what you're doing on the internet and everything else it possibly can in order to collect that information, build a profile about you, and then double whammy, connect it to the profile that they already probably have on you if you use other Google products like YouTube. Um, so we're not gonna get too in depth here. I'm just gonna tell you, don't use Chrome. Okay, next up, let's talk about Safari. Safari is in some ways more private than Chrome, which you'd hope for considering the fact that Apple has spent the last couple of years trying to position themselves around privacy. They do have some level of tracking protection in comparison to Chrome, but that's not saying much considering the fact that Chrome has no tracking protection at all. The problem with Safari isn't actually necessarily even related to privacy, but it is a big one. Apple uses a walled garden approach to all of their software, and that includes Safari. This means that the browser is only accessible on macOS and iOS on Apple devices. This means that even if Safari was the most private browser in the world, it wouldn't matter because many people would not be able to access it. Even worse, because of the cost of Apple products, the people around the world who most need security and privacy would have the least capacity to access it. So on this basis, on this lack of accessibility, uh, Safari does not get top marks. So if you can access Safari, it is gonna give you better tracking protection than Chrome, but as you're about to see, there are some better options. I have a bit of a soft spot for this next one, uh, Firefox. So when I was a young lad, um, every time I got a new computer, my mom would say, hold up son, bring that over here. I need to install Firefox and APG. Very techy, very concerned about cybersecurity at the time, which is maybe why I've ended up here. Unfortunately, uh, my mom was wrong because Firefox is actually not that great for privacy straight out of the box. One of the first things that you might notice when you open Firefox is that the default search engine is Google. Now, this is not very good for your privacy, but it is good for Firefox because Google pays them a lot of money to do this. The next thing that you might notice when you open up Firefox is that they heavily promote a feature called Pocket, which allows you to save content for later if you're short on time. Pocket is closed source, which means nobody can independently review the source code. 
and it also collects a weird amount of data about how you interact with it and what content you're saving, which if you check the privacy policy, unfortunately, you'll find out they can then share with third parties. They also collect a kind of scary amount of telemetry data, which is information that relates to how you're using the browser. Um, many applications do this in a privacy preserving way and it helps them to make the app function as well as it can, but there are other browsers on this list which collect less telemetry data and still manage to get by. So straight out of the box, Firefox does do a lot more in terms of tracking protection than Safari and way more than Chrome. The problem with Safari is that many of the capabilities that it has in terms of tracking protection aren't enabled by default and it can be kind of tricky to access them. In order to access them, you need to enter the about config menu, proceed beyond the cautionary message, and then manually go through this menu and change all of the relevant settings. But don't worry, there's a simpler way. All you need to do is install a user.js file. Uh, so create a new profile, open root directory to open file manager, Copy the user.js file from GitHub. You can do either one of these two things and the result will be an extremely private browsing experience. But really a, a good privacy focused internet browser should do most of these things out of the box because most people aren't going to take the time or just don't have the skill set to be able to do these things. So strangely enough, the best way to make the most of what Firefox has to offer is to not actually use Firefox. Use Liberwolf. Liberwolf is a fork of Firefox that basically does all the heavy lifting for you. When you open Liberwolf, you'll see it's a much simpler UI that takes out all of the unnecessary bloat that doesn't respect your privacy and dials up all of the privacy settings. This, uh, in my opinion, is the best way to get the most out of Firefox. Okay, so next up is Brave. And Brave is a fun one because Brave is controversial and who doesn't love a bit of drama? Most of the controversy behind Brave centers around their cryptocurrency implementation. But I think that the concept behind this implementation is actually pretty interesting. The reason why a product like Chrome tries so hard to harvest all of your data is because it's a very, very valuable asset that can be sold to advertisers. This is why big tech is so big, because billions of people are using their products and those products are designed in a way that allows them to collect your personal information and then sell it. This business model, sometimes referred to as surveillance capitalism, has turned the tech industry into the biggest industry in the world. Brave has developed a new system that is designed to undermine this predatory business model. When you use Brave, you can opt into privacy preserving advertisements, usually which show up as push notifications in your device, and you'll be paid directly by advertisers in their basic attention token in order to be a part of this program. Whether you love it or hate it, uh, I think it's a pretty interesting way to try and disrupt big tech's predatory business models. Despite this fairly controversial crypto implementation, Brave is definitely one of the most private browsers straight out of the box, and they balance this really well with ease of use. Brave has developed their own pretty interesting and novel ways to protect you from fingerprinting and other forms of tracking, and they even have a built-in ad blocker turned on by default, which I think is fucking great. To take things one step further, you can even access the Tor network through Brave in a way that's super easy and intuitive. All of these features are turned on by default and super easy to access. Even your grandma could probably use Brave without running into any issues. This is really important because privacy isn't just for people who have the time and the skill set to be able to use advanced tools or upload a user.js file to Firefox. It's for everyone. Another thing to note about Brave is that it's Chromium based. So if you are a Google Chrome user looking to weasel your way out of Google's evil clutches, then it won't feel like a huge transition to start using Brave. Okay, uh, last but definitely not least, uh, the Tor browser. So the Tor browser is, I would say, the most secure and private option on this list, but it comes with pretty significant drawbacks. Tor and Brave are pretty comparable when it comes to the super high level of tracking protection that they can offer you. 
with the key difference being that when you use the Tor browser, everything that you do is routed through the Tor network. If you're not familiar with the Tor network, it stands for the onion router and it essentially uses onion routing in order to hide who you are and what you're doing on the internet. If none of this makes any sense to you, but you'd like to learn more, uh, check out the blog in the description. Now, I'm gonna be real with you here. You probably are not going to use Tor very often, but when you need absolute security and privacy, Tor is the best option available to you. The main drawback that you're gonna notice when you use the Tor browser is that using the Tor network makes your internet browsing painfully slow. So yeah, unfortunately, the thing that makes the Tor browser so private and secure is also the Achilles heel when it comes to everyday usability. Um, this isn't a big problem when you're using it infrequently, but obviously it's not gonna be your daily driver. So what this might end up looking like is, you know, 98% of the time you're using Brave or LibreWolf, and that 2% of the time you've got the Tor browser ready to go. And something like this is what I would personally recommend. So as you can see, even though internet browsers look pretty similar on the surface, when you really get into it, there are some massive differences in terms of the way that they handle your data. And some of them are super, super creepy. And some of them go out of their way to try and protect you from that sort of stuff. Everyone's different at the end of the day and everyone has different needs. So you might opt for a super private browser. I would recommend that you do, but you might opt for something that has usability features that you find valuable. It's totally up to you at the end of the day. But now you and me have had a sit down, had a look at five of the most popular browsers out there and you can make that decision for yourself. I hope this was helpful. I hope that you had a bit of fun and I hope that you check out the channel again in the future because we're gonna be doing a bunch of these about a bunch of different topics. So I'll see you next time.